Welcome to the paranormal side. My name is Joe, and today we are going to be taking you in today's video to Appomattox Manor in Virginia. This location was used as the headquarters for U.S. President Grant. At the time, he was General Grant. He used this location as his headquarters for a few, I, I'm, I'm assuming for a few months during the Civil War. Uh, this place is known to be haunted. Uh, they say that, uh, I believe it's a Union soldier ended up getting uh, somehow stuck or uh, trapped in, in the wall downstairs in the basement area. And um, the reports are that there are scratching noises coming from inside the walls. And I believe that they hear, you know, voices and, and stuff like that. But um, I hope that you enjoyed today's video. And I hope that you don't forget to like and subscribe to our video, I mean to our channel. Because we really need it. And we do appreciate everyone who does. Um, but I have a note for you. We did not really get a chance to do a real investigation or really any kind of all at all because it was cold and really windy that day and and there were other people around not while we were inside the building but there were other people outside walking around and I did pick up what I think is an EVP or, or maybe one or I think two of them and they're pretty interesting, but they're, like I said, they're, they can be possible EVPs. So, um, it would be better if you wore your headphones. But, anyway, let's get right back into the video. And, don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Because we really need it and we appreciate every one of you. So, without further ado, let's get in, into this video. What does that say? Brigadier General Rollins, Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Grant and Lieutenant Colonel T.S. Bowers, Assistant Adjutant General. Sorry. Must have been the table. Oh, that's the door that he stood next to. Huh? That's the door that is still next to me. Wow, that's cool. This one says General Ulysses S. Grant, commanding armies of more than half a million men, lived for nine and one half months just outside this house. Wow. Grant's cabin is on the left. Appomattox Manor is in the background. See the house? Mm -hmm. See that the was Grant's cabin. Yeah, cabin. Mm -hmm. Sure looks different today. Yes. That's so cool. That's the video. No, that's the door. No, that's the door that Grant stood next to. Mm -hmm. It is awesome. Hmm? Here's all the books. Oh, did you sign in? No. Do you want me to? Sure. It's an old heater right there. This house was outside of Grant's headquarters. Well, the house behind Grant's headquarters. Mm 
I'm gonna try to take you on what tour that we can. This is pretty neat, dude. These are that men completely define her life during the Civil War. She had graduated from the Penn Medical University in 1860, but could not join the United States military as a surgeon. Instead, she served at City Point as a New Jersey, Pennsylvania state relief agent. The hell is a dude there with no head? I don't know. This is John Maxwell picture here in a humorous, humorous pose. Brought a hierological torpedo to City Point on August 9, 1864 that resulted in the wharf explosion. This hierological torpedo was one that Maxwell owned but never used and was donated by the Senate. Mm. So where are we at now? Mm. We're number 12. Right here. Yep. That's a hospital shape that patients wore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought it was somebody standing there. <laughs> That's the library. Huh? Another one is standing. Hmm. What's up? Did you see what they were holding? No, what is it? It is the bank of the city of Petersburg, one dollar. Hmm. I love this old style wallpaper. 
is so pretty. To me it is because it's really like old school. Mm -hmm. I don't know, that would be cool if we could go up. storage shed or something, I don't know. May have been the kitchen. The kitchen cooks and hot stuff. Cooking for the big house. Huh. <laughs> Damn, look how big that stove is. Or, or he is. This is cooking for the big house. This is the laundry. Sarah Caldwell. She was sold for eleven hundred dollars. Damn. She was pregnant when she was sold and came to work here after giving birth to her daughter. <clears throat> daughter Eeps Eps did not own her husband William. Sorry, Sarah Codwell. Yeah, that's terrible. She was so she was sold while she was pregnant for eleven hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. And then while she was cut, she was brought back. She was sold and came to work here after giving birth to her daughter. Mm -hmm. But she left behind her husband because nobody owned her. Oh, Lord. The laundry. Had an enslaved person who washed the family's clothes and linens until the Civil War. And in the end of the Civil War, after the Civil War, hired African-American women did the laundry. Unfortunately, there is no record of who did the laundry here until the mid-1850s. Damn, it's so blurry. In this laundry room, Epps had several had enslaved persons who washed the family's clothes and linens until the Civil War. Until the end of the Civil War, it says... After the, after the war, hired African American women did the laundry. Unfortunately, there is no record who did the laundry here until the mid 1850s. It would take more than 40 gallons of water to soak, bowl, scrub, and to have several rinses to remove any remaining soup. Sarah Condwitter. Well, sorry, Miss Lady. You were sold as you were pregnant. There's the upstairs of this too. Can't go up. This still looks really old. Mm -hmm. I always wondered how cold these places would be during the winter time, and now I think we know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And it is still cool. Excuse me. Uh, thank you.
Yep, smells like it. Or it could have been African American. I don't know, I didn't see no back way. So, I mean, I don't know what that could have been. I know there's dirt floors. Kind of smells like there was either chickens or horses in there at one time. I'm not sure. Could have been used for both. Damn, what's that out there in the middle of the water? See that? Some kind of masonry thing. guys that about wraps it up for today and i want to apologize first off that we haven't been posting a whole lot here lately um i'm trying to come up with other ideas uh for things that i can do it's so it's getting so cold and we don't really have a whole lot of places to investigate right this moment we're not doing a lot of traveling because like i said it is getting cold and we don't do a lot during the winter time do you guys have any ideas of what i could do to help start you know producing more content that maybe don't have anything to do with investigations i mean maybe i can tell come up with stuff like paranormal history you know or i don't i'm not too much into paranormal stories but if you guys like that kind of stuff maybe i could you know come up with some or find some just let me know in the description, and uh, I'm really thinking about just, you know, um, doing some paranormal, like, history, like, picking a location maybe once a week and telling y'all some about the history of the place and um, some about the ghost hauntings. I, I don't know. That's just an idea right now. But I want to start making more, you know, consistent um, content for you guys. And... Um, so that way you can, you know, I can also get more subscribers also. And plus, you guys, I want to make you guys happy. Y'all subscribe to us, so I want to make it worthwhile for you. So just let me know, and um, we appreciate every one of you, each and every one of you. Um, Y'all give us the encouragement and the motivation to keep doing this. But anyway, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Again, this is Joe, and this is the paranormal side. And remember, you're never alone in the dark.